are the truth uh, and Jesus to be the way, the truth, and the life. And those that hear it will be saved. Uh, and those that reject it will be lost. Uh, uh, but we've done our part. Uh, when we stand before God in judgment, He'll say, well done. Is the truth of the gospel. I'm not worried about telling people something that's in the Word of God I'm because it's absolute truth. You can't find it wrong. I read in a book the other day. I love to read. I read all the time. And I read where it said how the scientists now have proof how they believe that heaven is real. And I said, they just now finding that out. I've known that for years. And because God told me it was. And he said he was going to prepare a place for me. Yeah, that's right. Oh. Like, like they talk about there's a spot somewhere they call it and a spot in the brain, they call it the God. Uh, value or whatever. I knew that existed all the time uh, because there was something that spoke in my heart all the time. As some old preacher, I don't know how long ago it's been that I heard the name of the first preacher I ever heard. Uh, I mean, I can remember when the word penetrated my heart uh, and it made me feel like I wasn't like I ought to be. Uh, and I went on for several years uh, until one old preacher, uh, he wasn't a come from a seminary. I don't have anything against people being taught in the gospel and having a good education. I have no problem with that. How about this old preacher stood up and he'd all the time put his hand on his ear and I can hear his words today. I listen to name, honey. If you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're going to be lost and split hell wide open and it'll be, it'll be there forever and there'll be no escape for you. Hey, brother, that tore my heart in two. And the day that he finished, he said in that old raspy voice of his, as he stood there in front of the altar, and he raised his hand and he said, Jesus said, all that will come unto me and I'll give you rest I'll take your burdens and I'll give you mine and mine is so much lighter than you I know it walked down the aisle gave my heart to Jesus Christ and I've never been the same I'm not ordinary anymore I'm not the righteous blood flowing through my veins and my robes have been washed in the flood of the Lamb I'm going to crown this laid up for me. A crown of life that fades not away. Nobody can take that from me. Nobody's going to convince me any different. I'm preacher, you're kind of out of the ordinary. I hope I am. Hey, listen, Brother Jeff. I hope I live your life long enough until I can cause a stir in hell. I hope I live long enough until Satan gets tired of me. Until he said, I'm going to turn everything loose on you. I'm not worried about that because Jesus said, Lo, I'm with you always. Even to the end of the world. Had a demon come at me and God's going to put his hand out and say touch not mine and on it and neither do my prophets no harm I'm held, held in the hollow of his hand and nobody can touch me until God calls me these men have turned the world upside down he said you know what he did tore up their religion made them look at things differently now a lot of them, and if you read before that, he said that a lot believed. Some were very devout Jews, and a lot of women believed. But some were so stiff-necked and hard-hearted that they rejected the message. Jesus said that a stiff-necked and a hard-hearted generation will not receive my words. I'm glad, Brother Estill, he said those that do 
shall have eternal life. Amen. Oh, I believe the gospel is full of fire. I believe the gospel will set your soul on fire inside so that when trouble comes, you can lift up your eyes toward heaven and say, Yes, Lord, I know my help comes from you. You promised me that you'd lead me beside still waters. That you'd give me a place to rest. You'd provide my food and my shelter and my water in my meat. He'll provide everything we need. That's what you don't hear in a lot of churches. You go into a lot of churches, they are. And some of them, and I'm not saying this is wrong, but some of them, they, they got their own Bible, and it's numbered according to their books. And, they, and you know, as long as it's contained, got the gospel in it, I'm okay with that. I don't care what you call it. I don't care what name you give it, as long as, as it's not, you haven't taken anything out of the Word that, that, that should be left in there. We're not supposed to. Scripture warns us. But some of them, and I've seen them, they'll hand you a book and say, we're going to study out of this today. I went to, and, and I'm just, I don't know whether I'm going to say I'm bold enough to be ignorant or ignorant enough to be bold. <laughs> I don't know which way it goes, but I think I'm a little bit of both. But I walked in and we were meeting with a bunch of ministers talking and they got started talking about a doctrine. And, and they said, well, we believe this and, and we believe that and, 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 and this is the way it's got to be and this is the way it's got to be. And they got all upset and I said, hey, brothers, can I say one thing? And I try to keep my mouth shut back out. I said, can I say one thing? When you get up on Sunday morning, if you want to preach to a congregation, do you preach out of this or do you preach out of that book you got in your hand? I said, if you don't preach out of this, you're wasting your time. Exactly. Yeah, and you may have something in that book that matches this, and that's all right. But if it ain't in here, it better not be in the other. Exactly. And you're not going to accomplish that. I, I did this today. I, I didn't want to. I really, I wanted to, I tried every way to preach something different, but God wouldn't let me. And the reason I felt that today is this. We don't want to become ordinary. We want people to get up and say, man, it's Sunday. <coughs> I can't wait to get to grace to see what's going to happen today. I can't wait to see who's going to sing a song that's going to ignite my fire. I can't wait to hear the preacher preach the word that's going to make my feet want to dance and make my hands want to shake in the air and make these women who spend two hours putting their hair up shake it down. <laughs> Exciting to come to church. I look forward to it. Man, this is as close to heaven as I can get is to be with God's people in God's house, worshiping God and watching and sitting and wondering, God, what are you going to do today? Amen. Yes. Now let me say this, and I'm coming to a close. You can get your song. Now, we have people here that have gone through everything. And I think of Sister Melissa. She's sitting here. I know she's in pain. I know she's gone through a lot. We have people here who uh, had cancer. They've battled it for years. They have uh, fibromyalgia. They have uh, everything in the world going on. And yet, they haven't lost their faith. Why? Because they know God is not ordinary. Amen. They know God is able to take care of them. But now maybe you're one of those you haven't faced a problem in the world. Maybe everything's been great. But maybe you're just ordinary. Maybe you're not really willing to be bold and turn the world upside down. And a lot of you are moms and dads, some of you brand new moms and dads. You know whose responsibility it is to train these children? Yours. 
Because if you don't tell them about Jesus, the world will tell them what he's not. And I'm going to say that as I get them a song. Let's stand. If you today want to change your life and become something other than ordinary, this altar is open for you. I'm not saying you have to come here, but this will be part of a good open show. If you're willing to tell the world, hey, I'm no longer ordinary. I'm not like I used to be. I've been changed by the power of God. So as they sing, Will you come right now? Brother Esther's going to come to my soul.